Hello, intro to MassCom. Guess what? This is the last subject we are going to be doing a lecture on. It is about the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. There's going to be two, two, two lectures. Not going to be all that long, I don't think. You never know with me. I, I do my best. I really do to try to not make them too long. But um, I think we got two more. And you know what? That's it. That's it with the video lectures. So hopefully you've been keeping up with those, and hopefully you've been working on your final intro to MassCom final projects and doing those um, expansion horizon uh, assignments and the discussions with television and the movies. Um, so let's get going on the whole world on the whole to learn about the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. FCC, yeah, you know me. Look, look that. Look up that last part of uh, that lyric. It's from the 90s. It's, uh, I think it's by Naughty by Nature. They did something. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, let's let's get started, okay? Let me share. Like I always say, very sharing person. All right. Here we go. Boom. All right. Away we go. Play from the start. Oh, it, I forgot it did that. Look at that. All right. The Communications Act, Licensing, and the FCC. You've probably heard about the FCC. You've heard, you know, and usually it's probably, you probably don't have the greatest uh, view of them. Oh, they're like looking over us. And um, that's not the way it works. But that's the way you probably, if you've heard of it, you think of it in that way. Um, it is a regulatory commission. It de deals mainly with television and uh, radio um, because they have the television and radio stations, they need a license and there's certain rules they have to follow and it's, when there's certain content that gets on the air during certain times. Um, you know, and like I said, if you remember the safe harbor between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., that was from the previous chapter, safe harbor at 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, that's when you're allowed to air indecent um and, uh, not obscene but indecent material so but let's get into the fcc how they work how they're organized who's on this commission and just and just know that i used to do this before um teach this before i've cut down quite a bit so um so so it's not going to be as bad as it could have all right, so let's learn about the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, as we go on this magical journey. Come with me. All right, now the FCC was created out of something called the uh, Communications Act. Now, there are rules for this mass comm world. In television and radio, you've got rules. You can't just go hippy-dippy, we're going to go whatever we want. There's very specific rules on broadcasting, on what's frequencies and what can and cannot be said and during certain times and making sure I mean there's all these different rules um, so we have to follow them if you're in this industry all right um, one of the things they deal with um, is licensing every television and every radio station needs an FCC license or they cannot go on the air um, it's this is so the government can keep order, so it's not just a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. And there's bedlam, and this station is going over this this station's frequency or that station's frequency. It would be it would be it would be a nightmare, um, and that's what we were finding when radio first started. They were, they didn't know what to do. I mean, they have this and all they they learned on the fly that all these things were popping up. So that's why they had to come up with. Um, certain rules um, for first at first the radio stations um, so this is where we uh, see that um, now the FCC com uh, commissions is responsible for overseeing what we call the electronic media world television ma mass com world television radio um, and um, and it, everything has to fall under the guidelines of the US Constitution it is the Federal Communications Commission so it is an agency of the federal government which then has to fill under the guidelines of the US Constitution so they can't work around it or not under, you know, they have to uh, make sure they uh, fall within the guidelines there, okay? 
just like any other federal uh, agency. Um, and this is falls under a certain um, television and radio um, falls under a certain uh, clause in the Constitution. Okay, um, Article One, Section Eight, something three gives power Congress power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states. So. From that standpoint, yes, they didn't know about, this is the, the amazing thing about the Constitution. Um, of course, they didn't know anything about radio or television back then when they first wrote it, but they didn't know about commerce. And that's where this falls under. It is a form of co commerce when you think from, uh, from a certain uh, standpoint, from a certain point of view, um, because it is a business and they are broadcasting out and it goes over state lines and rules with that so and they do make money so that is and and a lot of times they do um, have interest in other foreign things or might be part of you know there might be some sort of uh, so that's where it would fall under and when they were looking this is where this falls under so this is under the con power of uh, Congress on um, the legislative branch and this is called the Commerce Clause. So this is where basically the federal government gets control or has authority over the television and radio um, industry. Right? So yeah, it, um, it, it, it allows congressional oversight over interstate and foreign, but not intrastate. Okay? Things that go on within the state, um, it doesn't, doesn't have oversight over that that's more that goes back to the states rights and you know but that's with constitution which is states and which is uh, federal rights um, so we see that you know so that's goes in with there um, it is considered interstate you may ask why because you have TV and radio stations in each state and they recognize with that state but um, it's the it's the the transmissions themselves. Think about the radio broadcasts. Think about the television broadcasts. What? There's not some magical wall once you go across the border. So, like, when if you go across um, the the, the uh, Pennsylvania Maryland border, you still get the radio station you you were listening to. Um, it doesn't stop. Oh, I'm over the border. It's you know, it's it doesn't stop. And so that's that's where they got interstate, you know, just because of the, of the of, of the reach of it and how it works. Um, they can't regulate regulate every single thing. So Congress. So what they do is they delegate certain powers and they have certain committees and stuff like that. Um, Congress does a whole lot. Some would say not a whole lot of good. Whatever they do. Um, Actually, do they really do much? That's a whole other thing. Um, that's on us to make sure they do things. Um, that's the the power of the vote is supposed to be for. Um, and if they're doing things that aren't good for us, it's our right to change them. But we never seem to do that because, oh, I know that name. Like, or we'll look at the letter. I'm going to keep voting that way. Is it getting better? No. But I digress. All right. Yeah, and this is where we have, uh, this is where, since Congress isn't going to do it, this is where they came up with the agency, the Federal Communications Commission, a.k.a. the FCC. FCC, yeah, you know me. Look that up, you might know that. Um, okay, what was that? Now, I always had a question when I was doing this in college. I'm like, I hear about the FCC, and I kind of killed my whole, that's with the, boom, the, 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 uh, the drum roll. Um, I always like, who, because I always knew there was an FCC and there was like a board, the Board of Commissioners. I always like, who are these people? And no one even really knows who they are. They've got an enormous amount of power. Um, and you're going to learn about who, who they are, what they are, um, what they do, how they work. Um, but here's a picture of the most current FCC commission. Board of Commissioners. Now the FCC is a bigger agency. They've got all sorts of departments and things. Okay, now here's the current board of FCC commissioners. If you can see, there's four people here. That's because we've had a recent change in administrations. 
and now we are still waiting approval of a fifth there's supposed to be five but as of right now there are just uh, four uh, the new uh, commissioner should be uh, voted on pretty soon once again it's a uh, appointed by the president and uh, approved by the Senate. And so we've got Jessica Rosenworcel. She has been on the commission uh, for a little while now. She's probably the senior person um, on the commission. So they've named her the acting chairperson of the FCC uh, board. And you also have Brendan Carr. Uh, Jeffrey Starks and a new recent uh, addition, um, Nathan Symington. Uh, so these are the current uh, people right now. A new board member should be voted in uh, pretty soon. Board is made up of five people, okay? They are appointed by the president and confirmed, confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Okay, seems very familiar to like uh, Supreme Court justices. Same, same point, same, uh, same process, um, except they don't usually, they, they're usually not nearly as confrontational with the FCC board um, as you would be with, with the Supreme Court. Um, but yeah, so we're the president at the time, and it's confirmed by the Senate. That looks like an important piece of information. Hmm. So I'm saying they're made up of five people. Hmm. And I'm saying it's appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate. Huh, that seems like an important piece of information that you want to remember because you might see it someplace in the future. Hint, hint, hint. Um, so, all right. So it's broken down by, uh, the breakdown of the board is by political party. Um, yeah, two Democrats, two Republicans, and one usually var and one varies by the administration in power. If the president is Democrat, then the, 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 the fifth person is Democrat. If the person is Republican, the third person is uh, is uh, Republican. Um, so it all depends on that. Um, they do serve five-year terms, except when they're finishing um, another member's term. Maybe someone uh, just left for personal reasons or you know, health reasons or they might have passed away um well any number of things so uh yeah they said it's five-year term um unless yeah they, they they try to figure out oh they're they're filling for a year so maybe they'll let them i think it depends on how how long they they serve or how much they fill in uh there for um for the for the limits so it uh, all depends. I take it by a case by case basis to see who uh, to see um, what what happened with the previous person. Okay, um, and you can't have any financial interest in an FCC business because that would be a conflict of interest. So you can't have any. Uh, you can't have like a, um, partial ownership in some radio station somewhere um, because the decisions that you make can in directly impact that station. Um, you, you might find some people who uh, think they might be up for that, something like that, and they might divest themselves of that um, so they can do it. That's happened in the past. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the rule. They don't want a conflict of interest, all right? Um, it is very scrutinized, as we said, like I said at the beginning of this, if you've heard of the FCC, you probably don't have a great, um, a great memory of it um, from a regulatory standpoint. Oh, they ban this and they ban that, and they're always watching, and they're like Big Brother, and you'll find out a little bit more on how that works. Um, now, when I first heard about them, it was back in the early 90s. Remember, I'm old. That's when I was uh, going to college. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, with uh, two live crew, this raunchy rap group back in the day, um, and they had some problems with them, so um, and some other things going on at the time. So that's where I remember that. Um, it is very so yeah, it's very political. It's very scrutinized either from the public forum or from political pressure because they are 
overseen by Congress and you don't get any more political than Congress and, and Washington and DC and the whole as I know you're very familiar with so it is very scrutinized from a lot of different um, ways uh, you know from the business side from the political side with uh, politicians and also from uh, dealing with the public um, they, they do have some consistent criticisms um, that, that pop up um, one of the big problems of putting people on this board very rarely is someone a commissioner that's really qualified. Um, a lot of times, I'm sure you you might have heard this somewhere before, but a lot of times a political appointee um, for any position um, they helped the person running in some way. Um, it could be you know any number of uh, ways like it helped them in some way they were a big help in some way of helping them get into that into that that voted in office and sometimes they will be it's okay I'm gonna give them a nice cushy uh, position here um, and it can be they have a political debt they pay it off this is my uh, thank you for helping me get into my position here so that's that's one of the problems with the uh, the FCC board um, and lots of times um, you find that the commissioners don't have any experience in the mass comm world um, they might have oh yeah many years ago they they worked at a radio station for a year or so um, you know or they you know they, they did so they were part of some other thing that represented somebody in a television or radio station or something it's really minor a lot of times very rarely do you have people that might have had some significant experience um, within the television or radio industry um, that could say hey look at that re look at that resume you know it's, they, they, this person would really have a good feel for that and that's really not the case with the FCC Board of Commissioners um, lots of times these people are lawyers, lifelong politicians, or what I said here, somebody with powers, idiot, fill in the appropriate relative. Um, that happens, that's another very big uh, thing. Um, we've, we've, yeah, I know you're very familiar with that. That's the way it's been for a very long time. That's probably something else we should work on and think about with all this um, family and friends helping, you know, being part of... Uh, government positions maybe they shouldn't be part of right? and that's all 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 parties who've been doing it for many years um, maybe we should come up with tools so people can't do that <laughs> that might be a, a, our first resolution or maybe something we start in the future maybe I can get you to do that like hey let's start the start the campaign to stop that this silliness that everybody's a fill in the blank buddy or friend or relative is getting these uh, positions of power where they probably shouldn't deserve it but that's part of the ash um, aspect of the FCC um, now there's many have uh, used the FCC to um, put themselves into a future employment to put on their resume or consulting sometimes lobbying um, which uh, we talked about that's uh, part of the public relations um, so maybe one of you would have um, do doing something like that, like that you never know um, sometimes it gets you at a high paid law job and what they call communication law and it's been some recent exceptions but there's some um, people like this guy here this guy is Michael Powell all right you would say who the heck is Michael Powell well he was the chairman under uh, George W. Bush. Powell should be a somewhat, I don't know, um, I'm sure with uh, your generation, if you know, you may or may not know this name, but Colin Powell, former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, um, um, and he was Secretary of State for uh, George W. Bush, and he ran for president as well, or no, he thought about running for president, but decided against it. Um, but um, yeah, um, this is he was chairman of the FCC board um, Julian Janikowski he was um, Barack Obama's FCC chairman he yeah, he didn't really have any background 
his background, um, Powell didn't have any background. Jankowski didn't really have much of a back. He did like some internet stuff that they kind of used. Um, nice little here. Got a little uh, little side note here. Uh, Julian Jankowski used to be. He's no longer married to, but he used to be married to um, Martha Raditz, R A D D A T Z. She is an anchor reporter at ABC News. Um, even lots of times she'll do uh, debates, and this was a point of contention in the uh, 2012 debate because um, she was one of the moderators for the uh, Obama Romney um, of, um, debate. She was the moderator for that, and it turns out she was the ex-wife of Julian Janikowski. Um, so it's you know, it's, and you, so there's kind of like a, and yes, they get along very well. Um, so, I mean, he's Obama's pick and she's the moderator for that. You're going to find a lot of relationships like that um, within the media and other things like that. Um, and people of power, another issue that we should probably think about and, um, and kind of like look at the, uh, Look at the industry the way it is, and uh, lots, just lots of uh, coincidental uh, relations and, and things like that of people that are in places of power, but also people who are in places of of, uh, of media companies that should probably be more independent, but might not be getting, and that might be one of many problems why we have what we have today. Which once again goes back to you. You're just gonna play the game and just oh, just fall in line, or you're gonna change it. It's up to you. I mean, we're we're, we're in a very dark place now, very very dark place, um, for many very reasons. And this was uh, Tom Wheeler. He was at towards the end of um, towards the end of um, of uh, of Obama's um, um, uh, term. He was uh, he was there, so he had some he had a little bit of experience in in broadcasting, um, so he was probably more it wasn't huge but he had some so he's probably one of the more um, qualified people as opposed to maybe some of the other people that come before. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of who these people are, how they get in there, what their terms are. Remember those most important things: how many people are there, um, who. Uh, the president um, uh, appoints them. The Senate um, ratifies them, um, approves or disapproves of them. I don't know if I've ever remember anyone being disapproved. Dis you know, um, but I don't know. Maybe in the early days, long before I was around, when they first started, maybe that was more contentious. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so just kind of give you an idea of the, who the board is, who it's made of. So these were all chair people, chairpersons of the, F, of the FCC at one time or another. Um, okay. So we go back to kind of like the power um, of how they get their power. Where do they get their power from? Like I said, Congress oversees them. They delegate. So officially, Congress gives the uh, FCC power to adopt, modify, and repeal regulations concerning interstate electronic media with the overarching goal of serving the, this is important, public interest, convenience, and necessity. That is the, what they call the PICON standard. And uh, I'll get into that a little bit later um, in, in, in this, in this uh, between the, between the uh, couple of... Uh, of uh, lectures, but public, P, I, C, and then the con kind of like meshes together, uh, convenience and necessity. So it's the, what they call, and it's the standard that the FCC follows. It's what's called the PICON standard. That seems important too. I think that might be a, a, a test question might see in the future. Um, now, only Congress can change the role of the FCC um, by amending or replacing the Communications Act of 1934. Okay, that's where it, the FCC was born. That's where we came up with the original rules and laws. Um, that 1996 Telecommunications Act I keep talking about all the time. Um, oh, there's our friend, the 1996 Telecommunications Act. 
that is an amendment amended um, pop act within this act the communications act of 1934 so that is part of this okay why because it has to deal with um, lots of different in, um, rules and within the uh, industry of television and radio and media in general so uh, so it all kind of comes back consider this almost like it's in a way the kind of like the constitution of, of a way in the way it's a specific act um, uh, but of how um, television radio works um, they do have a huge amount of power these commissioners uh, making all sorts of decisions um, you know with, with 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 how how broadcasting goes and they have to deal with a lot of the uh, um, new technologies that pop up what do they what do they have access to what do they have um, uh, with the, the uh, jurisdiction over um, for a little while there back I'd say probably like 2013 2014 there was a a push for the FCC to have um, jurisdiction over newspapers. I was like, that did not fly because wait a minute, there's not it's not television, it's not radio, and they wanted monitors. Okay, people. Oh yeah, we're just going to monitor what you do and monitor how you do things. We're not going to have anything to do with 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 what you do or like that did not fly. That, but they tried it. They tried it. Uh, they tried to do it. Basically, you know how you're waiting for um, MP. They didn't try because people were like, "Yeah, no, you're not doing that." But there were. Yeah, it, to me, it was almost seemed like it was. You know, when you're cooking a turkey or chicken or something, and you wait to see if it, if it's done. It's, they wanted to see if they could get away with um, pulling that. It's like, oh, are they are they dumb enough yet? Are the people dumb enough yet to fall for this? Um, not yet. Hope we never get there. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyway, um, but yeah. So House the Senate, they monitor what monitor what goes on in the FCC, and basically, and part of that is their annual request for budget appropriations. So money, the purse strings, how much money they are getting to do what they need to do, and like any other political thing or political uh, agency depending on who's in charge just like when I talked a little bit about public television that what they can do and what they do and how they do and what they put their money towards depends on who's in power um, presidentially and throughout the house and the senate as well well that um, and then to obviously how technology evolves and how they approach that Um, things that the Communications Act uh, did, it brought interstate wire and wireless communication under the control of the FCC. So this is where we get with TV, radio, and phone. All those things uh, became part of the FCC's uh, um, jurisdiction. So this, remember, this is all 1934. They had to establish what do we have control over, um, regulation of the MCOM industry, um, not uh, from a technical standpoint and from also what we've gone to the the content we talked about that previously um, in how the Constitution works um, but here's and now we're gonna kind of go into the act itself the Communications Act of 1934 how it's organized how it's you know how, how, how they act um, what what how it's broken down into and what it covers um, so let's uh, Let's kind of go into it. The communication act. Okay, it's act, uh, divided into seven different units, and they're called titles. Okay, seven different units are called titles. This stuff is important. You may want to remember this. Um, further from the once we go to the titles, then you have the sections. So first you have the titles, then it's the sections. Um, so yeah, so you got your titles, um, and then you get your sections, and the sections deal with very specific regulations. Okay, for example. All right, Title Three, Section Three of the Act specifically defines what radio communication is. Okay, that's just one example. Okay, so remember they have to, they have to organize it in this way. You're, you're dealing with laws and legislation and stuff like that, so they have to organize stuff like this. 
Um, but just to kind of give you an idea how it works, how it impacts, how it has control over and what how the jurisdiction in it works with the FCC. All right. All right, so the first one, Title I. It established the FCC and provides general guidelines on its organization and its operations. Okay, this is the FCC. This is basically the first thing. This is the FCC. This is what it does, and this is how it's organized and how it works. Okay, so Title I. Burn that into your head. Cinder it. That, would think that, if anything, that probably makes sense. It's Title I. So that would probably be the first title. Without this title, you don't have anything else. So, if it establishes the FCC, it's probably Title I, right? Okay. Title II. Um, basically, this uh, sets out regulatory framework for communications com uh, common carriers. This is where it got its um, power for the phone companies. So Title II is the phone companies. You know, the phones, those phone things. <laughs> Talking in the in there. Title II is phones. Title II is phones. Title three, all right. These are provisions relating to over-the-air communications. You know, radio, television, and microwave. And why am I doing that? Because, you know, the, 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 they broadcast out like that. They're like circles, whoo, 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 like a wave when, you know, when you throw the, the rock into the water and it boom, 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 goes out like that. That's the way kind of a wave works for, for broadcasting. So Title III delete, uh, deals with radio, television, and microwave. Okay, over the air communications. All right. Title four focuses on additional procedural regulations come bring FCC inquiries and trial like proceedings. Okay, Title four. Sometimes people don't follow by the rules. Sometimes there are um, violations of certain rules. Sometimes there are complaints, which there's a process to do that, from either from a public or from a governmental standpoint. But remember, all of this stuff, since it is a federal agency, has to fall within certain guidelines within the Constitution, right? So sometimes they have hearings, they have, you know, what seem like trials, and they have to follow very strict procedures for all that. Um, so there's certain rules, certain things, certain policies, certain steps that deal with all that um, and very, very detailed. So that's what Title IV. So think about like trial-like proceedings. That's what the, so like trials, for Title IV are trials, all right? Title V is outlines any penalties for the FCC rule violations. You mess up, you uh, don't broadcast on the right frequency, you go over somebody else's frequency, doesn't really happen nowadays, but if it, you do, or you might have some, somebody drops uh, an exploded deleted, uh, like at uh, 8, 15 p.m., and that's not within the safe harbor, then there might be issues with that, depending on the reaction and complaints. So whatever penalties or rules that are broken, Title V takes care of any of those penalties for anything that is, uh, any rules that are broken. Okay, so penalties for Title V. Um, Title VI, now this happened after I was born, believe it or not. Yes, I am that old. I was born in 1971. Um, man, I'm getting older, but I don't feel old. Anyway, um, this is where they establish regulatory framework for cable TV. Um, this is, now they're not as hands-on with cable television as they are with broadcast television and radio because you have to pay for it, but they still felt they needed to throw some, some rules in there and also to give people some opportunity, the public, um, it, it, it's a lot of different things, um, a lot of different things that have to do with cable television. Um, it might be some content, not as much, but then you like from technical standpoints, you do stuff like that. They also did stuff for, because remember before you had YouTube, there was no real way or, or social media with your cameras and your phones for people to broadcast out like you can now. 
Um, and some that's where we would have like cable, cable access shows where people could go to a local cable um, area and there was rules that, I mean, if someone wanted to do that, they could have, it, it wasn't great, um, but, um, but there were rules for stuff like that. And that's what they did with the cable um, companies and other things. Anything that, everything and anything that had to do with, uh, which I had to fall within the cable was Title VI. So there was only five titles when I was born and then Title VI popped up in the late 70s to early 80s. So, in Title VII, this is miscellaneous provisions such as unauthorized disclosure of private communications or telephone service for the, for the disabled. Um, yeah, this is like, okay, we take care of this and this and this and this and this and this, and here's Title VII, and here's just, okay, whatever else kind of pops up um, that doesn't fit within those first six, that's what we do with Title VII. Um, and it, depending on how technology goes and how things work, and some people were talking about the regulation of the internet, do they fall under that? Um, that's always a um, that's always an argument um, that comes and goes. Um, but Title Seven is like okay, we just need something to okay. None of this really fits under Title Six. Here's Title Seven. Just in case something pops up, so we can say we have control over it, and if it gets big enough, maybe we have to come up with another title. But this is just supposed to kind of, it's like a, a band-aid of sorts, or this is what gives us, if it doesn't fit the others, this is the, the miscellaneous, and other stuff, and the rest, okay? And the, yeah, it's, it's a very... Uh, generic thing. Probably not the best, but that's the way it works with the Communications Act. Um, and the Communications Act does um, get amended. This is uh, 1984, brought us Title VI. Um, but the, the whole late 70s and early 80s was, um, they were tinkering with it. What do we do um, with this cable thing? Because it really exploded in the early 80s. Um, so, and that they had to come up with another title. Um, and then 1992, it popped up again with some other cable things, um, more dealing with um, prices and how the cable companies were doing that and their, their packages, and it was inconsistent, so they felt they had to get into there. And then, of course, how I said before, the night, our friend, an old friend, 1996 Telecommunications Act. Um, but we live in under now where we have a very different things with ownership of who can own so much. Um, yeah, that's part of this whole Communications Act of 1934. All right. All right. So that's going to be the last bit of this. That's for part one. Um, part two will be coming up. So look out for it. And just know there's only one more video, video lecture that I have, and, and you're done. Hooray! With that, still work to do, but no more video lectures. Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you.